Hi there, it's John Hill here from Inspiring Fitness Personal Trainers. I'm here today with Phil. Uh, what we're going to basically do is have a quick chat with Phil about his experiences uh, working with Inspiring Fitness. So with no further ado, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to him. So hi, Phil, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Hi, John. Good, good, uh, good, good. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, mate. So first question really for you, but just tell me a little bit about your background and um, a little bit about you and, and what made you join Inspiring Fitness uh, when you did? Uh, well, so I was working within the catering industry from 2003 and we're trying to make, build up a career in that as a into management. Um, it was only because I was always worked in bars for university and post college in and out of work, needing work and stuff. And I was good at it, but um, I felt I was quite, um, always quite good with customer, with customer service and things like that more than the actual kind of um, the management side of it right. um, so much. Um, so yeah, I always felt like I could do, I was, um, it, it was really rewarding in that way, but then, uh, yeah, I kind of felt, and I got told in, you know, very subtle terms, um, and very no, softly nudging that you, you're not really come here, can't help to be a manager of lots of people. Right. <laughs> so, um, I kind of, kind of kidding myself and trying to kind of, uh, admit that to myself and realize, yeah, actually maybe this isn't for me, but what else could I do? <laughs> because, um, this was all I could feel like I, I had the experience and knowledge about. Mm -hmm. So I went away traveling and then I, um, with my wife and we went for a year around uh, Southeast Asia and um, Australia and things, and then came back. And during that time, kind of, uh, we worked out and chatted that um, I needed to change tack and pathways. And to do that, I, I would look to learn how to become a personal trainer, mm. um, realizing that there could be a career out of it, but, not like now not like now where it's like very 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 common back then maybe 10 12 years ago it wasn't so common but it was still fairly getting bigger mm. um so it was a bit of a risk and i needed to uh, come get that to cross my parents in a way because then um, their very um career would dom dom dominated i suppose and it was something to be kind of a bit nervous about but i then studied online and then i did a long distance course while i worked in the local bar where i live in colchester yep. um, and I did that for a year and a half, actually, while I did studied in the evening, I worked full time in the bar um, and studied outside of that. So I, I then got experience um, as I passed my fitness course and then my personal training course in the local gym. And it kind of went from there, really. From then, I was able to get some clients through the gym and I was employed by them for five years, right. um, slowly petering it out. And um Three three years into that, I then thought I need to go somewhere. I need to do something else with it right. um, because I'm getting more and more frustrated by the gym. But I was using it as a means to an end, and it was something that wasn't. I'd never been a gym person. I'd never really been a member of a gym at all in my life. But I knew it was somewhere I could um, wet my feet and get my experience, and maybe be in a, an uncomfortable positions where I would never really have wanted to be in, <laughs> like teach classes or try to kind of uh, talk to people I had never even had any relationship with and um, kind of be a bit stronger about it really. So yeah, then I um, I then got in touch with um, Inspiring Fitness, which I saw on a, I think it was reps at that time. I saw an advert about Inspiring Fitness coming down the side banner or so. And I thought, yeah, this sounds quite uh, good. It's home training. It's um, kind of, being your own, your own boss, maybe that's something I could maybe venture into. So I had a look into whoever, to any local trainers and found Matt Brinkley, um, a colleague of ours. And he, I got in touch with him initially and then um, spoke to him and asked if I could meet him. And then he was very um, helpful and um, kind of friendly. And he kind of made me feel kind of comfortable and um, kind of engaged with me to get in touch with you guys. So that's what I did yeah. back in 2000. And, Probably about that was back in 2008 when I was looking to do to do that. Yeah, uh, no, 2011. Sorry, 11, yeah, 2011. Yeah. And then yeah, I start. I got in touch with you guys, and yep. um, then yeah, the, the rest is history, I suppose. When were you when you're in that gym environment, Phil? What would you say your number one frustration was that made you think I need to do something different? Um, I suppose. It sounds a bit because I'm in a service industry for for people to come to me. Yeah, I suppose I found it a bit frustrating, and I, I I felt this in the bar as well when I was there. I knew it was the end of my time because I was starting to get irritated with customers, <laughs> and the way that I had to conform and deliver things, and I I was just getting irritated by the same old, same old, same old. 
and it wasn't within my um, ability to change it or be in control of it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's same with the gym. I, I really enjoyed doing it, but I was always in the confines of, well, I'd like to maybe express myself a little bit differently, but I didn't have the courage or um, confidence to be able to do that. But then I was always trying to conform to what the, I felt the gym wanted or what they needed. Like you, we talk about profiles in the gym. They're always so generic and I didn't really um, know how or what or where, when to kind of stand out or whatever. And then it was becomes like a cycle of um, a cycle of that. And uh, yeah, it gave me lots of experience, but um, at the end of the day, I was starting to kind of think, well, I'm starting to become a trainer that I'm not, <laughs> but I, and I want to be, I want to try to express my own personality and this isn't my own personality. Yeah. And just the fact of having to be obliged to um, click, do lots of the jobs that um, gym instructors would have to do, clean, have to do lots of the other stuff that kind of got got you away from doing what you were wanting to do in the first place and um, all of that kind of stuff. And I suppose, yeah, I just started to get a bit frustrated with the general whole environment. And it, as much as you wanted to be a fit instructor, part of your job was just to do all the mundane office kind of stuff as well inside the gym. and. Yeah. Uh, you're always playing office politics with other staff members or who were in sales or with whatever and there's always uh there's always something that they want to do for themselves rather than trying to help the good of the good of the clients which is basically what the gyms like to make money don't they and whether that's for the benefit of the client or not or the customer is another thing okay so how do you compared to then how do you feel now um yeah i feel completely relaxed i think i found my in a way, I think I found the way I can just be myself. Um, I'm, I, st I, I have self-doubt, so I have, well, there's the next person down the road, personal training is probably very much more knowledgeable than me, whether he is or not, I, or she is, it doesn't matter. Uh, they are much more better at specific training than me, whether they are or not, it doesn't matter. But I found the way that I can convey what I, I know and what how um, and I found a way that I can be myself in front of people and um, people seem to appeal to them and like that because I have a very good strong retainment of clients and there seems to be a way that I'm able to build relationships with people and um, uh, that becomes the, the more important part of um, the, the, the personal training in a way than sometimes the physical. <laughs> yeah yeah um, because yeah. they need an outlet sometimes i'm not just a personal trainer or a fitness instructor i'm a, a confident or i'm a, a therapist <laughs> i'm an agony aunt i'm someone who yeah who who sometimes they just want to come out and get away from the house or work and they, they don't really care about the exercise so much it's up to me to deliver that in a way that is what their goal is as much as anything but they they also use me as an outlet <laughs> and yeah. the ability to kind of Get, get things off them or out of them so that they can go into their day a bit more revitalized and a bit more um, kind of energized and active in mind as much as body mm. Mm. Um, and a bit freer, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And I found that's really helpful. Mm. Good. So let's talk about sort of the results you've seen then from particularly working with obviously Inspiring Fitness and back at the start when you were starting out, what kind of results have you seen sort of working with a, a company like ours that provides the support we provide? I think the main results are just having the confidence to stand on your own two feet. So when I first started, I'm, I used to I used to maybe think oh, I'm never going to be able to get to um, like 20 clients a week. Yeah. And if I do, I'm never really going to, uh, that's going to be such an impossibility to maybe me able to keep them. And then and um, then I'm going to have to kind of keep, keep going through the struggle and struggle and struggle. Yeah. Um, but I suppose I felt that the main difference is, um, yeah, having the confidence to know that if things, uh, the, the, the only way things are going to go wrong is if I make them go wrong, yeah. because there's, there is the belief in knowing that there's so many people out there needing training that in a way, um, if, if I don't really have the people coming to me or I don't keep the people coming to me, then it's not really their fault. It's all my fault. And, but I have the confidence to know that that is the case. And, before, um, when I first started, it would have been um, there's something there's something wrong with the process, or this um, I wouldn't have had the confidence in myself to know that uh, uh, I I I was as good as I could be, or I, as good as I am. Um, 
and I suppose Inspiring Fitness gives me the support and the background to um, aid me with all the things that I feel weak in. Oh, okay, well, for so, example? Um, like just the business. We've spoken about personal trainers um, in lots of your newsletters. Personal trainers can be very good personal trainers, but when it comes to business, <laughs> yeah. that's a very second, uh, that's a very um, different thing thing isn't it so mm -hmm. i think it, it has given me the ability to not be a, an amazing businessman still but to have the confidence in knowing that i probably can advise people on how they can run their businesses a little bit better if they're running self-employed businesses although i've still got a lot to work on but i've got confidence and history and experience behind me to from the inspiring fitness um, support that i think mm -hmm. uh, that's what they that's what i may, may really learn some progress with um, and my business has um, slowly, steadily, but surely maintained and stay stabilised in a way that um, for the last four, three, four, five years, I've five, even six years, I've had quite a, a consistent amount of clients year on year on year, month um, and and income that I can still work on and be um, get better with, but. Um, yeah, there's a stability there that I would never have ever imagined if I hadn't maybe if I hadn't have got the support and mm. from the Inspiring Fitness Group. Yeah. What would you say? I mean, in terms of just just session numbers, what what would you say your your average consistent session numbers has been over that time, Phil? Per week. About twenty five. Right. Okay. Good. Mm. Okay. Fantastic. And what yeah. would you say um, has been your in the time you've worked with a company like ours? What what would you say your biggest win has been? you know, your biggest win? What has been the biggest thing you would say? Well, we're for Inspiring Fitness, in what yeah, way? Just, yeah, in terms of from, from when you started till now, what would you say has been the biggest, most satisfying sort of win you've had? doesn't have to be anything massive, just... Um, just, I think, yeah, just to think that, that I've been able to sustain this for nearly 10 years now. I'm in my ninth right. year. And just the, the consistency. Yeah. I think the biggest win for me has been the confidence and consistency that I've had, I've been able to um we have um yeah. and keep and knowing that it doesn't really matter how experienced i seem to be with inspire in inspiring fitness that i still there's still the support out there for me to um to kind of grab hold of or get hold of um, and even the um people coming in who are new to inspiring fitness it doesn't mean they're new to training or personal training and stuff yeah. so there's lots of different backgrounds and experiences i think i think that's a i think i think that's a really good big thing as well yeah mm. fantastic good brilliant good good stuff and um assuming that um let's say somebody watching this video is maybe considering choosing this option in terms of the personal training business stroke career what mm. would you say to them that could perhaps help them to to make a decision i'd say i'd say uh, call email um just get, ask questions and um don't be afraid to um to find out <laughs> don't yeah. put it off like anything with clients i said this to someone else who um, called who got in touch with me regarding um, this a couple of a year or so ago now don't be treat it like your clients really yeah. <laughs> if you're if a client if someone or inquiry if an inquiry gets in touch with you and you and they say oh, i'm a bit unsure and i'm not sure so i'm a, i'm a, um and i don't know what to do what would you say to them exactly the same as that look Come and get, come and find out the um, options. <laughs> Go and to come and talk to me. Tell me what you're looking for, why you're looking to do this, and what it is that you're struggling with that makes you feel that this could be the pathway for you. And if you kind of treat this as the same as what you might treat an inquiry coming to you, then really you're going to find out all the answers you need, which is basically going to give you the idea, the um, yeah, whether you're whether it fits you or whether it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah. And do you um, think, in your opinion, based so, on your experience, do you think that somebody sort of brand new to the industry who perhaps hasn't got the experience, who's qualified, but hasn't got the experience of actually working with people, do you think you, they could see similar results to you, even, even without any background in the industry? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. It's difficult because when you're not in that situation yourself, I had quite a lot of customer service skill um, experience yeah. and then built it, build up skills of what I know can work. And even if you're a bit unhappy, or you've got other things on your mind. You've got mm. you got to learn how to leave things at the doorstep, as it were, when you go out and see these people. Yeah. And you've got to learn to kind of separate slightly. But sometimes you you just got to, that that can then become natural. Mm. But if you haven't got the experience, it's hard for me to relate to that so much. But I think you've just got to find out what you are particularly good at. Have that as your on driving strength. Mm. But 
be willing to learn like everything um uh my the customer service kind of relationships that i have are probably my strengths but it doesn't mean that i'm not trying to learn and pick up and become stronger and better at yeah. all the other things and if you've got a strength somewhere that is above mine then but you've then got to use that to kind of help you become stronger in the other areas that you need and through experience and time you're inspiring fitness you'll realize that relationship building is probably one of the biggest things you'll ever need mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you can't do that then you're going to be very short um have very short shrift for car clients and customers and that um and it's going to be a very tough kind of maybe unsatisfying job because you'll you'll never see those those kind of developments yeah mm. how important at the start was having a predictable and uh, consistent lead generation source yeah that was that was that was um really essential really i think um i think when we when i used to go to lots of um quarterly meetings uh we used to sit down and talk about the the ratios between how many leads are you getting and how many of those converting and all of that and it used to kind of feel like god it would never come or you you you're trying your best and sometimes yeah there's reasons why there's excuses or reasons why it might not be uh the four to one which was maybe an ideal number uh, mm. ratio um but then really it doesn't really matter about the reasons or the why or the whatever it's just where well that's the case go and let's let's make sure we sort it out and yep. fix it and yep. with that kind of um support going away just because you leave them and you go off in your own world and, and really you've got a colleagues um on the end of the phone or the end of a um a video call um so uh you're not on your own and you've got um you've got that support there straight away so i think um yeah having those numbers there and going through the numbers it teaches you how to kind of analyze or look at your business a little bit more um differently than just whether you just whether you have the results and the numbers of uh, clients figures or their measurements is <laughs> is you got to look at your business as numbers as well and know those measurements and um yeah. assessing those are just as important as assessing your clients <laughs> numbers yeah. and measurements yeah. and just uh, thanks separating for that, Phil. things really yeah thanks for that Phil. and just fine over to you really anything else you want to you want to share that we haven't covered yet um not really no i can't think of anything to be fair <laughs> Well, Phil, I really appreciate your time then. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, I'm sure that if you're watching this video, then you'll find uh, Phil's sort of feedback uh, valuable. And of course, if you want to get in touch, please feel free to do so. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, no, thanks ever so much and good luck to everybody. Thank you.